Now, you've been hearing, I suppose, all morning that uh, the TV licence uh, revenue has uh, dropped off, and this is probably on foot of uh, the RTE scandal which emerged in uh, June, in late June and early July. Uh, to talk about this, uh, we're joined by Bauer Media Political Correspondent Sean Defoe, and we're also joined by former Communications Minister Pat Rabbit. Uh, good morning and welcome to you both. Uh, Sean, we'll uh, go to you first, uh, just to give us the bold facts of this. Yeah, so this is a parliamentary question that was given to the Fine Gael member of the Media Committee, Brendan Griffin, in a request to the Department of Media. And basically it outlines the licence fee take for all of June and then for the first week of July. So remember the RT story broke about the 22nd of June, so it was it influenced a little bit the figures for June, but not massively in July is probably where we get the real figures. And, and what it shows is that between the two, a fairly significant drop of about almost 6,000 licence fees, either not not renewed or a drop in the total number issued. So the way that they their licence fee operates, you have your renewals for people who are in place and then they have new licence sales. So that might be people who bought a new home, maybe moved house, etc, etc. And the drop for the first week of July is a 25% drop in renewals and a 40% drop in new licence sales. So what that means in hard cash for RTE is basically a smaller drop in, in June, about 2% overall. But the, what it means in hard cash is about 934,000 euro for gone between June and July, 263,000 in June and 670,000 for the first week of July. Obviously, we'll get more figures. But if that same level were to persist, same level as the first week of July for the rest of the year, you'd be talking about by the by year's end, a whole of about 15.4 million euro in the RT budget based on, on the licence fee. That's based on a weekly loss of 670,000 euro. Now, of course, the way these things tend to go is that for the latter weeks of July, people would have seen more of the controversy over the last few weeks and more of the salacious details, I guess. And also, there tends to be a snowball effect with these things. If people see, well, all these people aren't paying their TV licence, why would I? So the fear among some ministers is that actually this is the thin end of the wedge If you that, and when we get the figures for later on in July that they'll actually be worse for evasion. Yeah. Um, the, the breakdown of the licence fee, I have it here in front of me. Um, it's interesting where the money goes. Yeah, so you, about 85% odd goes to RTE as a whole. There's 7% that goes to uh, basically commercial media, goes through the Sound and Vision Fund, which is for, for different sort of projects that might be on News Talk, might be on other commercial stations. They could be documentaries, dramas. There's usually funding rounds done for those during the edge of the year. And then there's other money that goes yeah. to TG Car, but the vast majority goes goes to RTE Fund. All right. Uh, Sean, thank you very much uh, for that. We will watch as the summer and autumn unfolds as to what the long-term impact of that RT scandal uh, will be. But um, before I go to talk to Pat Rabbit, I'll give you the exact breakdown. The licence fee is €160. RT1 accounts for €58 of that. Uh, RT2 um, accounts for €31.21. Now, RT1 obviously includes all the news current affairs uh, programming largely seen on that network. RT2 at uh, €31.21. A lot of sports, sports rights and also the cost of actually uh, putting the outside broadcast units in place, uh, making up a lot of that money. RT Radio 1, €13.40. RT Radio Nogelta, €8.33. Uh, Lyric FM of your 160, €4.79 Euro is uh, paying for Lyric. At uh, €9.26 uh, goes to support RT performing groups. RT support for TG Cahar at uh, €6.39 goes there. There's a Broadcasting Authority levy, which is 175 At uh, TG Cahar, a uh, deduction of 671 Not sure about the distinction between the RT support for TG Cahar and the TG Cahar deduction. So I suppose if you add the two of those together, you're looking at uh, 13 euro in total for uh, TG Cahar. Uh, the Sound and Vision Fund, as mentioned by uh, Sean, funding independent producers and so on, 10.53. And then the rest of the money, 9.62, is the collection cost, which goes to one post and uh, the Social Protection Department. So, uh, Pat Rabbit, good morning. Good morning, Pat. You won't be too surprised, I suppose, that uh, the impact of the RTE scandal has had on the licence fee collection. Well, uh, not really, but it, it is serious. Uh, but probably not all that surprising. You even had the Minister for Media equivocating 
when she was asked about uh, whether she would uh, ask people to continue to pay the license fee. So, you know, it's not all that surprising. Uh, will it knock on throughout the year? Hard to say. Uh, maybe some uh, rationality will return to the debate. Um, when you're talking about rationality, uh, where is the deficit? Well, I, I mean, I think, you, you know, we, we, we have overdone, uh, overcooked the controversy. Uh, you know, you would think it was the end of RTE as an institution uh, to listen to some of the debate. It's not the end. The issue is, how do we fund public service broadcasting? And uh, it would appear uh, that uh, a great majority of people are persuaded that uh, public service broadcasting is a public good, that it's a cornerstone of our democracy, and that we do need an independent space to hold a national conversation. Because although we've become more American, uh, we're still different. We have a unique history. uh, We have our own culture. We have our own games. Uh, we have our own unique politics. Uh, we need a space uh, where we can have that national conversation. And by and large, Irish radio uh, has been good at that. And the proposition that it's the end of the world and uh, that, uh, you know, uh, we're not going to be able to uh, reconstruct RTE as well as the network of mm. Uh, other radio um, stations, including local stations that are there, uh, I think is uh, over the top. Now, the the dual funding model, uh, I mean, they've addressed it in other European countries in different ways. Uh, We uh, support RT by uh, allowing it to advertise and take advertising and sponsorship revenue and also with uh, the licence fee. But of course, um, you don't have to have a television apparatus anymore uh, to watch content. And uh, when you were minister, you had hoped to change the way public service broadcasting would be funded still by dual funding, I presume the advertising would continue, but also uh, by a more direct way from the the public, the listening and watching public. That's right. I, I don't see much wrong with the dual funding uh, model, provided it is properly regulated and managed. I, I don't see what the big challenge is. Uh, yes, uh, of course, technology has moved on, and the traditional TV in the corner is no longer... Uh, the only way of accessing public service uh, content. In that regard, we we need uh, an independent, uh, a device independent, uh, perhaps premises-based public service charge, because we have to decide as, as a country, if you think that public service broadcasting is a cornerstone of our democracy, well, then you have to pay for it. And there are two or three uh, alternatives out there. There are those who argue for state funding, which seems to me maybe we can uh, regulate that, but it seems to me to uh, uh, reduce RTE to the status, potentially in times of crisis, to being an arm of government. You can have the ad hoc arrangement that we have at the moment and have had now for too long of uh, we'll give you a grant to bail you out uh, if you can't make the sums add up at the end of the year. And that really is is disastrous and inad- insufficient. Or you can somehow uh, revise uh, the concept of a public broadcasting charge that will bring in revenue that would assist, as I intended, uh, the great expansion of the Sound and Vision Fund to enable others in the independent space to bid into it for program making. And Uh, The question of that other funding mechanism, though, uh, the TV licence, obviously collected by Unpost, you get TV uh, licence evasion, you get court cases uh, and so on and so forth. It's it's not a a very efficient uh, process. I imagine that prosecuting someone for not having a TV licence is an expensive business, uh, far more costly 
than the money foregone in the license itself. So it doesn't seem to be a very modern way of doing things. Um, is there a, a simply a better way that it goes on to uh, every electricity bill, irrespective of who the provider is? Because, you know, you can't watch a laptop without power. You can't watch a phone without charging it. Um, so, you know, whether it's in your own yeah. home or in your uh, the office where you work, these devices have to be charged. Um, and more likely they will be charged at home. So just add it on to the electricity bill. Well, you're you're right. Without any doubt, collection is a difficulty. Evasion is rising. And ironically, modern communications has made it easier to evade the the payment of the licence. I toyed with whether we might be able to incorporate it in the household property charge. Uh, But uh, the Revenue Commissioners uh, will take the view, and I don't think it's changed, the Revenue Commissioners will take the view that, yes, our job is collecting taxes, not utility charges. So whereas they were talked into uh, collecting the domestic property charge, Uh, It seems to me that the Revenue Commissioners, I don't know this, but I think they would take up the position still that their task is uh, tax collection uh, and that this is somewhat different. It is essentially a utility charge and therefore brings into the frame the kind of um, solution that you have articulated there. I accept that uh, there is, at the moment, a real difficulty about the efficacy of the collection system. Yeah. Um, the uh, thing is that we do collect um, certain things on behalf of government through even private agencies, uh, RTE being a uh, semi-state. But, I mean, insurance, for example, the insurance levies, we collect them when we pay a premium. Yeah. Oh, no, I mean, uh, it, it, uh, it, it undoubtedly does, in my view, come back to the most efficacious collection system and some imagination has to be exercised there because the reality is even if the present uh, uh, figures for almost 6,000 downturn in respect of license fee payments for the first week in July, uh, even if that were to recover somewhat, the evasion is now well in excess of 50 million already. Uh, so in those circumstances, you're also impacting on the ecosystem of independent producers who come up with some of the most imaginative ideas, whether it's in the area of culture and drama or sport uh, or public affairs. And, you know, they're going to... They haven't been much talked about, but they will suffer from the situation that obtains at the moment as well. Mm. And of course, um, those figures for RTE, uh, which uh, I mentioned earlier, are, um, what is it, RT1 television, 58 million, RT2 television, 31 million. Uh, Out of those sums come lots of payments to all those independent producers, uh, Dancing with the Stars produced independently, uh, some of the the dramas produced independently. It goes on and on. Um, So if RT loses revenue, they're almost inevitably going to cut their purchases from the independent sector. I think that's inevitable. And I think also that uh, citizens need to appreciate that there is an irreducible minimum below which you cannot produce quality output. I mean, have a look at the situation across the water. The BBC collects some $3.8 billion from the licensee because of their greatly larger population. Uh, so, you know, if you expect RTE to deliver on the objects that are in the Broadcasting Act in terms of the imposition on them, in terms of to educate, to inform, to um, entertain, uh, uh, entertain. Uh, then there is an irreducible minimum. If you go below that threshold, uh, it's, it's uh, nonsense to talk about producing quality output. 
Pat Rabbit, former communications minister, thank you very much for joining us.